I have a confession to make. I stole the underwear of a seven-year-old little boy. Now, to be clear, I was eight years old at the time, but that is no excuse for my actions. You see, I've always considered myself to be an honest person, an upstanding guy, and it probably goes back to my, one of my earliest role models, someone I've always looked up to, Superman. When Superman the movie came out, it changed my life. I wanted to be Superman. And by the time I was about five or six, science and technology had advanced to the point that they could turn an ordinary boy like me into the Man of Steel. Two words, Superman underoos. Now, to the uninitiated, underoos are like Victoria's Secret lingerie for kindergartners. <laughs> you get a blue undershirt with the uh, Superman logo emblazoned on it, and you get a pair of red briefs with a yellow waistband, just like Superman. And I was so proud of my underoos that I would go out in my neighborhood patrolling, looking for evil and crime to fight <laughs> in nothing but my underwear. I would go to the supermarket and flash complete strangers with my S on my chest and my button up just so they'd know they were safe. I also had powers back then, but they weren't so super. I couldn't uh, leap a tall building in a single bound or it wasn't faster than a locomotive, but I could talk to my imaginary friend Cato, who was a ghost that lived in my coffee table in my family room. I also had the superhuman ability to refuse to go outdoors and play and instead stay indoors and read the World Book Encyclopedia and play with my rector set. It was always easier for me to make friends with the people I found in my comic books and imagination versus those in real life. And so I was definitely more Clark Kent than Superman back then. And the notion of going to summer camp uh, was very exciting, but also a bit scary. Uh, I, when I got to summer camp, I realized that I didn't know anyone else there, and a lot of the kids had been going there for years. And there was a group of guys that I thought were pretty cool, and I was about to make my move and make my way into their clique, and that's exactly when the shit went down. One day after swimming, it was a normal routine day, went back into the locker room to change into our dry clothes, and it was a normal day except for Peter. Peter was crying uncontrollably at the locker, excuse me, at the bench next to me. Peter was a seven-year-old Buddha-esque boy who was having what was probably the first of many nervous breakdowns. <laughs> I continued to get dressed, and a little bit later, our counselor came out and said, hey gang, Peter has lost his underwear. Take a look around your area and see if you might find it. I look down at Peter, and he is draped in nothing but a beach towel and his warm, salty tears. And I think to myself, Peter needs to get it together. <laughs> so I look in my locker, and no, no underwear. I look in my bag, and I don't see Peter's underwear, but I do see the underwear that I wore to camp that day. And this was curious because at this point, I was already fully dressed. Hmm. So I took a look around and inched toward my locker and pulled my shorts out a little bit and looked down. And I saw the yellow waistband poking up. And I looked a little bit further down and I saw that my briefs were blue. And this is strange because Superman's briefs are red. Didn't make any sense. And then it hit me. Holy utility belt, Batman. <laughs> that yellow band was not the super belt that holds up Superman's super pants. It is Batman's utility belt where he keeps his batarang, his bat sprays, and the keys to the Batmobile. I was wearing Batman underoos, but I didn't own any Batman underoos. Now listen, I am Superman all day down to the socks. I would not be caught dead in a pair of Batman underoos. <laughs> Except there I was, sweating and panicking and about to shit what were apparently Peter's panties, a pair of Batman underoos. Now, my first thought was I should just tell the truth. Just, just do it. But then I thought, I'm going to have to raise my hand, say, I have on Peter's underwear. <laughs> take down my shorts, take off Peter's underwear, hand them to Peter, 
get my underwear, pull them back on, then pull my shorts back up, all while the entire world was watching me. And then after all that, what if they still didn't believe me? What if they didn't believe it was an accident? Then I thought, well, I could just not do anything and, and, and hope I don't get caught. But what if I do get caught? Either way, I'm getting thrown out of this camp. And my mommy is going to kill me. She always says, Scotty, do not embarrass me. And I'm pretty sure this is, this is what she was talking about. And then those guys that I'm, I was really close to getting in with, they're never going to want to hang out with me. I'm going to have to eat lunch by myself the rest of my life. Oh, my God, it's, it's almost lunchtime. Peter had been wearing those underwear for at least three or four hours <laughs> before swimming. His bathing suit parts were in where my bathing suit parts currently are. It's like our bathing suit parts are touching Gross. Now, I know what Superman would do. Superman would tell the truth. He always tells the truth. And so that's what I should do. Just tell the truth, confess, get it out of the way, and at the very least, I'll be able to take these nasty draws off. But I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I didn't want to get in trouble, and I didn't want to be known as the dirty underwear boy for the rest of my life. So I didn't say anything, and I snuck out of the locker room and prayed they didn't do a strip search. (laughs) Meanwhile, Peter, well, Peter had to go the rest of the day al fresco. He had to free ball his way through horseback riding (laughs) and go commando at archery. And I have felt bad about it ever since, but I am glad that I was able to get get it out tonight. And... Peter, if you're out there, I am really, really sorry, buddy, and I hope you're able to turn it around. They